good afternoon from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well, sending lots of love as usual. Uh, like I promised yesterday, here comes my Liverpool top 10 or just under if you get what I mean of all time from what I saw in prison what I thought about them their characteristics and ridges uh, from all things required in that life to get in Uncle Yami's top bit uh, politics aside outside I was an outside with many of these men uh, but we'll start from old to new so I'm going to kick off with the great Michael Showers now all those all, all those that come from Liverpool those around the country will remember quite clearly 70s 80s Michael Showers his name was ringing like a big red alarm way back in the day a throwback to the stylistics throwback to the real thing if you get what I mean uh, he spent time with me in Swellside briefly only saw a little glimpse of him but some of our pals were of the closest quarters to him so we know that he done a 22 we know that he was a great manipulator we know that he had his hands in all the pies we knew that he done armed blags we knew about his brother Delroy had been with me on previous sentences sentences uh, but we also know that he was a big cannabis dealer as well I often wondered whether the A class shout was also because they said no he didn't deal with A class but Uncle Yummy's got a story to go with Michael Showers about that because uh, one of those days there you know, when I got released from Loudoun one of my old friends Johnny uh, from Northwest London called me one night and said Yami can you come down to Yorkshire with me I said to him yeah I said yeah well why we I've got to pick up something you remember my man from jail from Swellside in the 90s Michael Showers I said yeah yeah I remember him the big don he said to me yeah I've got to go down and pick up a few bits and bobs of the other stuff uh, down there in Yorkshire so basically he was asking me to be his security to be his bodyguard to come all the way down there Uncle Yami said yeah he will take that he'll take this I was only out a short time then as usual but I jumped in the car we got to Yorkshire we got to Bradford Uncle Yanni we John knocked on the door the door opened right imagine when I walked into the, the house the flat right I walked in and there were three old Asian men there right but you could see they knew their stuff so when we walked through the door they locked the door I heard the door go click 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 and they said to us oh, sorry we didn't know you we weren't expecting it we haven't had no phone call of Michael showers uh, where you got to go and pick up this thing uh, I, said, I said, so they said, oh, hold on a minute, we have to pat you down to see if you're carrying anything, blah, blah, blah. I said, you're not patting me down, what are you talking about? John was going, no, hold on, Yami, let me deal with this. Uh, it's just a cross-wise thing, can you ring Michael now and tell him that we're here to come and get that thing off you, blah, 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 blah. So it was that kind of thing, but I ain't taking on shit. No, um, no search over no one, if you get what I mean, you know, them times there, uh, chess was big, uh, all that. But they were serious. They weren't playing about this Bradford lot, right? They said, okay, 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 go right, sit down in, on the sofa. Everything was cool, like da, 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 da. So they made a phone call. They said, sorry, yeah, miss, they've been missing phone calls earlier on. Da, 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 da. Passed over the package. He passed it to me. I jumped in the car and we disappeared. When we got in the car, I said to him, don't ever bring me somewhere where we're going to get stripped down like that or attempted to be stripped down. He goes, yeah, but Yami, what, what was I doing? I didn't know. I didn't, but either way, uh, Uncle Yami says that was his one experience outside uh, with related to Michael Showers if you get what I mean and these are the things that can happen on drug deals if you go in there blind and you're not known to the other recipients that are getting information relying on information of somewhere else yeah you owe me this can you pay that off and give it to them and then we squash that you know that kind of thing so I don't know if Michael was actually involved in Class A uh, so I can't really say that or whether it was just a side issue but Intents and purposes, Michael Showers goes down as one of those early ones from the Merseyside that Uncle Yami puts in his top 10. We go down a little bit further down the line, or a little bit before, or a little bit after, we go to Billy Grimwood. We go to Billy Grimwood because he could have a row. We knew, Uncle Yami knew from in, all the intelligence in prison uh, about Curtis and John Ass and that, 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 that. Billy Grimwood sadly uh, with that life, you know, what can happen around drugs and things. He lost a, a, his son or somebody really close to him. And, you know, there's a whole heap of politics and mix ups amongst that. That's what, not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about Billy Grim, Grimwood as a man uh, and many of those around me uh, from that era, from that age group, rest in peace talk about him as a man of substance before the sad stuff so Uncle Yummy can only rely on that because I have never personally met him same way with Tommy Gildia now 
for all my intelligence and for all that my information over the years, I know that Tommy Gildia is a major figure. I'm thinking that you was close to Albert Redding. I'm not sure if it was you or Billy Grimwood. I'm not absolutely sure if my wires are crossed, uh, but I know Albert Redding talks about you highly. I know that there was a mix up with the craze when you was younger. I know there was a whole heap of politics around that, but they respected you. But we also know about Tommy Gildia, uh, is I know that in Merseyside, he rose to the ranks very, very quickly, amongst other things, if you get what I mean. I ain't got permission to talk, but rest in peace. I think he died about 98 uh, with Billy Grimwood. I don't know, around about the same time. They're no longer with us, as far as I know. Uh, but Tommy Gildia, I can tell you one thing, because uh, Peter Clark is in my top 10 of uh, Merseysiders that I met in prison. I'm afraid, you know what I mean? For whatever the politics and that are out there, Uncle Yummy rated Peter Clark really, really high. He could have a row. Loved his sport. But passionate Everton supporter, right? There were many that were around in that time in Whitemore from all neck of the woods. He never said nothing to Peter Clark. Uncle Yummy knew he was doing a life sentence then. He got off that, uh, uh, um, that alleged offence and he beat that justifiably. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing you're back in prison now. I don't want to say too much. But Uncle Yami rated Peter Clark one day. Um, and, and the fight, sorry, his brother Steve Clark, right? Now, I know there's a lot of politics around everything, and we know a lot of sad things have happened down on Merseyside. I'm hearing one of those fights in Tommy Gildia's back garden with Pat McGill, something like that. Something like that, Pat something or another. I don't know. I can't remember because I don't know him either. But I know Stephen Clark had a second, third fight with him in that garden in Tommy Gildia's. Right? And he was greased up apparently and he got the better that day. And there were some doubts about the first one or blah blah blah. But I know the Clark family could look after themselves if you get what I mean. And what I saw from Peter with his fist, Uncle Yummy says that he can only say uh, what he saw. And as a man, Peter Clark, I've got to also say he's very respected everywhere from London all around he kept himself he was a serious serious man and they, you know what used to make me laugh Tony Parker and all them right they was all on the wing at the same time there's a guy with glasses if he knew this guy from Liverpool trust me he's heavy I can't remember his name but he was on the wing in Whitemore with me oldish kind of guy and he said oh yeah his ass squeaks when he walks he's so tight Peter Clark but with me every so often Peter used to call me down and say yeah me yeah I'll go and see him yeah, you can have that. Yummy, don't come back to me. Like, do, do, do. I'm just keeping you sweet, looking after you. I did, do, do. I, yummy, like Peter Clark, man. I like the way Peter Clark, he was. That goal that you scored, boy, you're not a great footballer. Peter Clark, let's have it straight. One day, because I used to play you at left back, we used to play in the team. We play your left bank for your strength, durability, and your up and down the field stuff, and nobody ain't going past you without a fight, Peter. But one time, the corner came in, and it came all the way out to the box, and you came charging through. Everybody fell on the floor, and it ended up in the back of the net. Uh, he wanted to score so bad. He loves his match of the day, Peter Clark. But Uncle Yummy has to say to you that I have to say what I saw, and I'm telling you, no one walked up to him. And said nothing in there while I was there for four years I was with him so I've got to look at it that way you see what I mean so for all the politics that go around there you never wanted a one-on-one -on -one with him Uncle Yummy is not going to shed too much light on that but we work down the order we talk about Tommy Gildia yeah Tommy Gildia real real handful respected by all all those that were around him and respected all over the country Tommy Gildia but I never met you I haven't got permission to talk rest in peace but I've got some stories so if I get the okay of the family or whatever and I could do that or someone mentions it says something to me Uncle Yami will come up and give you what he's heard and not what he saw but he will make that clear so we break it down we go into the we go into the second we go into the we go into the next bit of Liverpool and it's very very difficult it's very difficult for me because you lot talk about John Haas right and what's happened all the politics all the stuff that's going around uh, about that related to this with that and that when you're, you're a big drug dealer when you're doing things sadly your name has to get called in some capacity but when I saw him come back on the rerun after the Michael Howard sentence where he was alleged to have given up a garage full of explosive machine guns but nobody else got nicked you see what I mean so he said I've got some information for you if you could knock down whatever I don't know if this is 100% but this is what I gathered from when I met him so he came back there was a lot of stink about him when he came back to Whitemore during his time and talk oh yeah but he he made a deal he made this he made that but he came on the wing he never run from no one he was 
was no shrinking violet. Do you see what I mean? I can totally tell you what I saw. So then it all panned out a little bit, it all calmed down and he was certified there. Again, some of the big figures, they wouldn't talk to him. But Uncle Yemi says, if it was just that alone that you gave up a garage full of things uh, to get your sentence reduced without anyone being nicked, Uncle Yami can see it as a good move in a, in a psychological way, if you get what I mean. So if it's just that alone, because I don't know about other things, you get me, because I know about Curtis and things mixed in together, but my head's so jammed with what I know, but you don't know all the facts that go with everything. All you know is when you've been with this one person here, there, and he says that to him, and you're listening, and you're thinking, well, does it mean that, but I heard that bit down there. No, we can only, Uncle Yami can only go by what he saw. And what they did to John Haas, right, um, when, when, when he came back for that second sentence, then they brought up the other thing uh, for the perjury in the court of law for that Michael Howard thing. And then I saw him down the block in Long Island. I knew he'd been railroaded. It was all political. We got a four or five tariff uh, for something uh, with that, with the perjury alleged to have gone into court, perverting the course of justice or something of that nature that made him get a sentence that wasn't fixed so that they could have their wicked way with him in there, left him down the block in, in Long Island. And you know, when it's political, they're going to play about on you. But what Uncle Yeah he saw from him was bravery because they were all talking this and that and that and that but they never actually you never had that much trouble when you came back do you see what i mean and you did you was a figure in that life with drugs and the the, the amounts and you know that lifestyle and all the all the people involved uncle yami has to put you up there somewhere do you see what i mean from what i saw in prison and the way that you carried yourself so i can only go by what i saw if it went wrong somewhere else i wasn't there uh, but yeah, that's the way I feel about John Hass. So I've had Peter Clark, John Hass, Tommy Gildia, Michael Showers, Billy Grimwood. Um, right, so we move on to these lot here. See, Uncle Yami says today that the G brothers have to, have to, the G family, have to figure in, in Liverpool folklore and Liverpool history. I saw one fight through the block, downstairs, Danny G, his brother, I don't know his character, I don't know what he's like as a person. All I know is with his fist, he can proper have it, mate. And I would have to put him up against anybody, you know what I mean, on any given day, you know what I mean? Cause he can have it, you know what I mean? There's no if or buts about that. Uncle Yummy tells you today that Darren G, by, my, by my, all my knowledge and people that are close to me from Manchester and Liverpool, Darren can have a round too. They were big figures in that life. Uh, Darren's left it all behind now, but I'm saying in the mix with certain things, when they were living that life, their names were getting called on a regular basis. When you meet Curtis, when you meet John Ass, when you meet Pete Clark, when you meet Tony Buck, when you meet all those Scousers, Sam Coles, all of them put together, you, you, you hear what you hear and they are a figure to be reckoned with or was in that life, if you get what I mean. So, oh God, I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Just as it was going well. Oh God, save you, because they're cutting it all lot around here. Right, so I get down to the nitty gritty. Now, we know that there are better fighters than some men. Every man, I believe, who can have a row, good with their feet, good with their hands. Oh God, don't tell me I've got that hate for becoming them again. Right, so I say to you, I look at things not just from a fighting point of view. I talk about Sam Cole. I don't, I haven't met him too many times. I know that all figures all around the country loved, respected him, likable character. The much loved factor was Sam Cole. Tall, uh, about, this, about that life as he was, doing well now in the community, giving back. Uh, but by all intents and purposes, I was looking through um, uh, 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 um, in education, I was looking through a window of the recess and the geese from Bedford for a sly one at him. And Sam's quite tall. You remember in them, them environments in a prison diet, when you've got a tallness and build like that, you need to eat loads. But he got a big, big right hand. He wobbled for a little bit, but then he came back and he battered the geezer. You know what I mean? So I saw that briefly and he got moved or whatever. I never spent a lot of time with him after that. But all those figures, he is such a true and loyal gentleman with that lovability character and the likability factor. Everyday life treats everybody about the same without disrespecting and bullying and that kind of stuff. So in jail, really, the crown for the Scousers over all them years that I saw through all the 80s, 90s and things, it has to be Sam Cole. Because London, Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, everybody, everybody loves Sam. You know what I mean? There's there's men like I could say to you, all right, all right. 
Sam Cole can have a row too. He's a kickboxing champion, blah, blah, blah. He's refined his art now as well with his hands because he's training with some of my lot around the country with his fist and everything. So he's refined those other bits to go with what he had. Not that that's the be all and end all uh, for Sam Cole. But Uncle Yami put Sam Cole as the most loved scouser that ever lived in the cafes and everywhere else i've got to say there's some other dark stories i can't go into that right now i haven't got that kind of permission i know he's leading a normal life now but i put him near the top of the tree for his charismatic and his way about doing stuff as well and so long and true i'm hearing from those that are never getting out that he looks after all of them in there he is such a true geezer they showed me letters on my last bit after the 13 they're saying yummy look you're sam cole look da -da 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 -da. he doesn't forget people man he's as real as they come I would want to put because Andy Shacks right as far as I know his dad was born in Liverpool and he spent his early life in Liverpool that's as far as I know it you lot might tell me something different he's from Schismore whatever Lancashire yeah yeah but when I saw him he had a Liverpool he had a Merseyside accent right I put him at the top of the tree for fighting I put him at the top of the tree for the game itself Andy Shack. I put him at the top of the tree uh, for well respected as well you know some different parts as well Andy but Uncle Yami respected him we, we, we hear that his old man used to go in a pub on his own in Liverpool and bend back those those still things that you pour the things out of only his sister I'm hearing could come and get the old man out of those bars and another strong strong man but Andy Shack lady with his hands and all that I have to put Andy up there as the top of the tree with all the other bits confined combined already I'm hearing his case is a bit shaky as well you know where man tried to shoot him as well at that time too so I'm not going to go into too much of that but I do rate Andy Shack as of the highest pedigree would I put him in the same charismatic level with Sam Cole no not that that kind of aura if you get what i mean but his own aura he does it in the way that he does it if you know what i mean i know my teeth are coming out again right so we get that we know we put them up there we put them all in there so we have to put curtis warren in at the top of the tree all right i would say in prison sam cole was the most loved but for all things combined together curtis warren the little bits that I saw, such, such, such a serious, serious, serious man. And and very, very uh, easy to understand as long as you don't over, you don't cross the line with him, right? So we look at his crimes. We look at where we Uncle Yami tells you, we look at also that he doesn't need nobody to do his dirty work for him, even in prisons. I met many, many big drug dealers and big dons over the years and who were the money people with all the money, all the links, but they couldn't fight to save their backside in there. They'd have to go and pay somebody else to do it and blah, blah, blah. Curtis was not about that. I wish I'd have had more time with him, but I saw little expressions, little psychological moves, swell side, Maidstone, along the years. You know, I mean, he was down a block in the cat is one of those times when he came back from Amsterdam as well. Uh, but Uncle Yami puts him at the top of the tree for all things combined as well. Many, many men liked him and respected him. He's not a hyperactive individual. He's not somebody that spreads his business around. He's not somebody that wants to be friends with everybody. He knows already that it's peak time for him. He knows that they're after him. He knows they'll do anything they can with all the nonsense that's written, you know, during the politics of criminals' lives that are a bit more far-fetched sometimes with what the media says, police say, the authorities say. We know that he was a big timer in that life so those are all my early ones right um hold on i'll give them the reasons why it's gonna be too long now but that's that's about it i give special mentions uh, to those those other scousers that i met along the years i look at i've also put marvin i put marvin marvin was born in liverpool right so i'm not talking about prison because i never spent a lot of time with marvin but obviously, you know what I mean? His brother were partners and everything. But but all intents and purposes, Uncle Yami, uh, from, I used to get the feedback up until he got shot and afterwards from all those that are around, from London, Manchester, from all over the country. And Marvin was a major, major figure outside with drugs, with violence, with whatever. All the things combined together. You know, there's even talk about a couple of bodies were missing. I don't know about that. Uh, but I know uh, that his name does get called for certain things that a lot of those big figures get called for. So I was an L. So I know I've got family close to Marvin and they all say the same thing, that Marvin was an absolute figure in that life on the street with 
that life that he used to live and he's come through everything you know i mean those little periods in jail i can't i can't really i can't really as far as i'm concerned marvin wasn't really a jail man he could look after himself nobody would he wouldn't let nothing pass him if you get what i mean but he didn't suit jail and he didn't do enough of it and he didn't need to because why he was already established out here so those are those ones also pay my respects to spenner benjamin uh i also pay my respect to marvin's brother barry uh even though Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I also pay my respects to Peter Smith Pepsi uh, down there in Liverpool, a major man, major figure that I liked and respected as well. I thought was proper stuff as well. Don't know about the politics, I don't really care. I'm only telling you about my relationships with some of those men that I met over a lifetime in jail. And the Scousers breeded a lot of great fires. So much love. I'll be happy. Be up um, later afterwards. I've got another one coming up. I think we're going to do the parcel one in a bit with Reggie Cray. Loads of love.